Hello, Facebook. How are you guys? Hello, Instagram. How are you guys? We are here again. It is Thursday again at noon Eastern time. And here I am coming to you live to talk to you about yet another super important health changing topic. If you are ready to radically shift your health, if you are ready to get pregnant faster, if you are ready to heal from an autoimmune disease, if you are ready to do all of the above, guess what? I am your girl. I am here for you. And this is what it's all about. So for those of you that are new, we're constantly getting new people on Facebook and on Instagram. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me into your life, for letting me be a part of this health transformation that you are on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You probably know because you're following me, but I'm Amy Raup, and I like to help people feel better. And I've written a couple books about how to do that, and I do that on a daily basis in my clinic as an acupuncturist. I do that on a daily basis um, as a coach to clients all over the world. I have helped thousands of women conceive when they were told that they couldn't or that the odds were against them. I myself conceived naturally and easily at the age of 40. I've written three different books. Uh, the first is called Chill Out and Get Healthy. That book is about 10 years old now. And then I wrote another book called Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. And my most recent book is called Body Belief, How to Heal Autoimmune Diseases, Radically Shift Your Health, and Learn to Love Your Body More. And in all these books, the premise is virtually the same. It's about you taking back the power over your health. And that is on every level, mental, emotional, physical, nutritional. That's what this is about, whether you're trying to conceive, or you're just trying to be healthy, or you're just trying to heal just trying to heal, you know, it's that simple. But that's what it's about, you taking back the power, and that's what I like to do, is to give you the tools to do it, because you have the power to do it. It's not me standing here as some authority telling you what you gotta do, it's me giving you the tools and expecting you to show up for yourself, because that's what you deserve. If you really want to heal and radically shift your health, you gotta show up for you. So, Today's topic is a hot topic because I deal with a lot of women trying to get pregnant and the epidemic of fertility challenges is continuing to grow. And so this message is very needed and women need to hear it. They need the support, they need the love, they need the guidance. And I am here for you. So today we're gonna to talk about what we are calling your fertile plate. And um, the idea came to me just the other day. I saw Dr. Mark Hyman post a picture on Instagram of what his plate looked like. And it was kind of this fun um, infographic. And I said to my team, I want a plate like that. And we're going to call it your fertile plate. I want to show women what should be on your fertile plate. And I will also say that it's a combination of the information in both these books. So yes, you can get pregnant is very obviously, based on the title and the image, my fertility book, right? This is the book that I want everyone reading if you're looking to optimize your health and your fertility. However, if you've been trying to conceive for some time and that you have some other health conditions going on, say something like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, symptoms and signs of IBS, celiac disease, um, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, if you have eczema, psoriasis, if you constantly get sick and, and you've tried everything, like say you've tried this book and it hasn't worked, you gotta also read this guy. Because this is kind of like this book, next level. This is the next level of healing that your body may need. What I discovered through writing this book and through all the women that came to me through this book was that majority of undiagnosed, mismanaged fertility conditions, these women that have this you know, idiopathic challenge, right? Everything looks normal. We don't know why you're not getting pregnant or they continue to have miscarriages and no one can figure out why. It means that they're dealing with an autoimmune condition that hasn't been treated properly, that hasn't been properly addressed, that may is just being medicated, um, and there's no real education behind it. Autoimmunity is an epidemic. It's on the rise. It's affecting se women 75% more than men, women in their prime. 
And so between these two books and what I've learned, I have created what I think is the optimal fertility plate. What you should be eating, the marks you need to hit every single day, every single time you have food, <laughs> to optimize your health and your fertility, okay? A lot of women out there right now are really into low-carb diets, they're into intermittent fasting, they're into ketogenic diets. That's awesome if you wanna lose weight. That's awesome if you need to jumpstart your metabolism. Those diets are horrible for your fertility. They are horrible for your hormones, they are terrible for your fertility and your hormones. There is to be no intermittent fasting, zero intermittent fasting. There needs to be healthy carbs in your life and on your plate. There needs to be a lot of good healthy fats. You need to be eating within the first hour of waking up and it has to be protein, fat, vegetables has to be those three things. And then you need to eat every two to three hours after that with those same three things. For those of you that are really interested in the macros, on a 2000, 1800 to 2000 calorie diet, which is about what you should be consuming if you're trying to conceive. If you are at 1200 calories, it's a little, probably too low if you're trying to conceive. The least I think is 1500. So if you're trying to conceive and lose weight, maybe 12 to 15, but if you're trying to just maintain weight and get pregnant, 15, 800, 2000, somewhere in there are, is your cal caloric intake. And your macros need to be 40 to 45% fat, and then 30% carbs, and 25 to 30% protein. That is what you need to be getting in, okay? So it's a lot of fat. Fat is the key. Fat is what a lot of women are missing. They're too low fat. They took that whole low fat craze too seriously. And they're drinking low fat milk, they're eating low fat yogurt, they're, they're skipping the egg yolks, they're not eating avocado, they're not eating that many nuts or seeds, they're kind of like, oh no, 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 it's too fattening. Guess what? A fertile body loves fat. Fat cells store estrogen. Estrogen loves to help with egg quality. It helps with uterine lining. You need good quality fats in your diet. And yes, you can get pregnant. My general recommendation is, are you ready? And then we're gonna go over the pretty picture. Eating for egg quality. If you guys haven't read this, it's, it's a best-selling book on Amazon and women's health and fertility, so I think you should read it. Um, ideally, you are going to get in, I want you eating like four tablespoons a week of butter or ghee. I want you getting two tablespoons a day of a really good quality oil, like olive oil, coconut oil. Um, I want you eating nuts and seeds, full fat well, I say in here, full fat dairy, if you can handle it. Um, if you have access to good quality raw dairy, that works too. But if not, full fat coconut milk, avocados, nuts, seeds. If you can't do nuts or seeds, then you're doing lots of avocado. You're doing lots of coconut. You're doing lots of ghee, coconut oil, coconut meat, and you're getting in your 45% Fat. Bone broth is an amazing source of fat and protein and all the amino acids that your body needs to optimally function, okay? So I want you to think about these things. Am I getting enough fat? And then also, am I eating enough vegetables? I am looking at what I want is... Ideally, we're getting upwards of six servings of vegetables a day. Two or three of them should be cruciferous. So that's broccoli, that's Russell sprouts, that's cauliflower. I do like cauliflower rice, that's how I get in the serving, right? And then I'll have some Brussels sprouts. Always make sure as well that we're getting in our healthy carbs. Um, my two favorite ways to do that are plantains and sweet potatoes. But then also zucchinis, like any of the summer squashes, any of those uh, spaghetti squashes, awesome sources of carbohydrates. So your body needs all of that. So I'm gonna pull up um, my picture. You guys won't be able to see it here, but I just need to see it. I wanna run through it with you guys, okay? Um, filtered water. 
obviously, well, that should be obvious. I want you drinking half your body weight in ounces of water a day. You gotta stay super hydrated. Chinese medicine, this is how we see it. If you are dry, if you are not hydrated, if you have dry skin, dry hair, dry nails, dry lips, you're just dry, guess what? The inside of your body is dry and dryness leads to equals very little cervical mucus, thin uterine lining, not enough blood flow to, to make those ovaries healthy, to douse those ovaries and really nutrient dense blood to make healthy follicles. So we need to stay super hydrated, okay? So water, bone broth, part of your life. I want four ounces to six ounces of bone broth every single day. I want, again, like I said, half your body weight in fluid ounces of water. Ideally, it's room temperature water because the uterus in Chinese medicine, as we say, does not like to be cold. So we don't like lots of cold or raw foods at all in general, but especially for a woman trying to conceive. And now if we go to the plate, let's look. Majority of the plate is vegetables. It's a ton of green vegetables. Then we have some root vegetables like, like parsnips or beets or turnips. Again, they, those are great sources of carbohydrates. The carrot family, amazing for regulating estrogen in the body. The healthy carbs, so there's a sweet potato on this plate. I want at least one sweet potato a day or and or if you have a pretty physical life, uh, serving of plantain. So that's what I tend to do. I have like a serving of plantain chips and I also have a sweet potato pretty much every single day. Um, sweet potato, all my veggies are cooked and they are cooked in a healthy fat like ghee or coconut oil. Avocado oil works as well. Um, and then you can see asparagus, right? So we're just basically getting ideally six to eight servings of vegetables a day. So that means your plates, so you should have like three plates that look like this a day, basically. So your plates are loaded with spinach or like I right now have butternut squash soup. Um, this is made with coconut milk, ghee, butternut squash, sweet potato, and then I also put an egg in here. And so I am getting a ton of good healthy carbs, Lots of veggies, lots of fat, and you know my nutrient dense protein from my egg, all in one swoop. So this is kind of sort of my lunch because I'm just sitting in front of my computer doing my Facebook lives for the last hour. I go live in my my secret groups before I come to you guys. Okay, so this is what your plate needs to look like, and then we're gonna throw in some avocado or other healthy fats again. You know, coconut is a great source of healthy fat if you're if you're non-dairy, if you can do dairy, uh, meaning if you tolerate dairy well, you don't have any skin conditions, you don't get sick regularly, you have a healthy, easy poop every single day, you don't have eczema, you don't have psoriasis, you don't have Hashimoto's, you could do dairy. And if you can do dairy, then you could have some full-fat cheese. Ideally, it's grass-fed, from a grass-fed animal meaning. And then we want high quality protein on that plate. We want three to four ounces of a high quality protein. So things like animal protein, so grass fed meat, pasture raised meat, chicken, beef, turkey, whatever suits your, you know, your needs. Uh, or a good quality fish. I love wild Alaskan salmon. I love wild cod. I love halibut, right? Those guys fall into a great category. You could also have eggs as a source of protein. If you digest them well and you don't have an autoimmune condition, you could also do beans or nuts as your source of protein. Again, it's, those are not complete proteins. They're missing some essential fatty acids that the animal protein delivers. Beans and nuts should always be soaked and sprouted so as to reduce the lectin content and allow your body to then absorb and utilize. But again, we are going for 40 to 45% fat, which that half of avocado has a lot of fat. So that's why it doesn't look so big on the plate. But then also remember, your veggies are cooked in fat, your bone broth has fat, your meat is typically cooked in a fat, right? So you're, you're using fat across the board. Again, fat is similar to, as I was talking about water, the fat nourishes and hydrates the tissues. It gives your body ample fluids. It really lubricates things. And guess what? Healthy cervical mucus, really healthy follicles, which translates to really healthy eggs. Um, 
Oh, so the macros. Can you repeat what you need? So you need 40 to 45% fat. You need 30% carbs and 25 to 30% protein. That's, that, that is a healthy macro breakdown for fertility and also for autoimmunity. Interestingly enough, the macros to heal an autoimmune condition and to optimize fertility are almost exactly the same. It's like 40% for autoimmunity, for fat, and 45 for fertility, for fat. Again, girls, look at your BMI. I want your BMI like right smack in the middle of the range or towards the upper end of the range. Not low BMI. I want your body fat, again, like upwards of 20% body fat. That is optimal for fertility. Sometimes my girls just need to gain five pounds. And guess what? Their fertility thrives. And typically, I get them to do that because I change their diet and I get them to eat more fat. And then their body composition shifts. Boom, boom, boom. They get pregnant. That's the best case scenario. For a lot of us, we're eating foods that are actually aggravating our system, increasing inflammation in our body. And what we need to do is reduce inflammation in our body. So you notice what's not on the plate. What's not on the plate is any processed crap. There are very little grains on this plate, okay? You, not to say you can't do grains, but a lot of people don't do well with grains. So the healthy carbs for people who do do well with like rice or quinoa, which is actually a seed, not a grain, but rice is a, a grain, you could have some healthy rice on this plate. And for some of my girls that actually need to gain weight, I'll put some rice on their plate, right? But, but generally speaking, we want to look at where are healthy carbs. We don't want, I don't want you eating processed gluten-free crap, okay? I don't want processed gluten-free breads. They, they, they're fine once in a while. Homemade sourdough is awesome if you can tolerate it. That, that to me is like the best bread that you can actually consume and eat. I make my own. It's very easy to do. Um, or we also buy the brand, oh gosh, I'm gonna blank on the brand, but it's a really good quality brand. They sell it at Whole Foods. It's made the old fashioned way. I think it's called old fashioned sourdough. Um, I can't believe I'm blanking on the name right now, but anyway, I should have written it down. But so keep this in mind. So grains aren't on this plate specifically, and that's somewhat intentional because of my understanding that most women dealing with fertility challenges actually have an undiagnosed autoimmune condition. If you don't currently have fertility challenges that you know as know of, and you just want to prepare your body to get pregnant, eating this way is still awesome, but you could throw in some grains. You could throw in like a really good quality rice that you soak um, first and then cook, and you cook it in bone broth with ghee or butter. So again, healthy fats, healthy carbs, a ton of vegetables, three to four ounces of protein. Bone broth, four ounces every day of the week, lots of good healthy water. This is what needs to be on your fertility plate. So let me just make sure I'm not missing any questions. Oh, and I have an incredible, an incredible offer for you guys today that will help you maximize your health and your fertility even more. So I created the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant cookbook. It was actually a book deal that I was about to get. Then the book company folded. I had all this content. And I said, I'll just self-publish it and I'll sell it on my website. It sells for $27 on my website. It is just a PDF, but it's like a hundred recipes. I mean, it's a lot of information and I spent a lot of time and energy making it. That's why it cost $27. However, today, today, there's a flash sale on the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant cookbook. So for only $7.20, you can get your hands on the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant cookbook. You have to use promo code cookbookflash0219 and I'm gonna forget what the pretty link is. But if you just go to my website, it's under workshops and guides. Courtney, perhaps you can post the, or Beth, whichever one of you are on, can you post the link to the cookbook on Facebook? And then once you post it, I will see it, and then I will um, tell Instagram what the pretty link is. But basically, if you go to my website, amyrop.com, you go under workshops and guides, you're gonna see my cookbook there. Click on that, boom, 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 enter, cookbook flash 0219 and you're going to get that book for seven dollars and 20 cents and you're going to have it immediately because it's a pdf that you get to download immediately and you have access to close to 100 recipes that follow these guidelines ooh, ooh. so that's how we can get our fertility in tip top freaking shape okay so i'm gonna head over to some comments um reading yes you can get pregnant now just turned 43 Woohoo! okay 
Rabia, hi, my love. Gave birth to my daughter at 43. She'll be six in May. Zero complications after 20 plus pound weight loss. I'm convinced I was able to conceive because my positive lifestyle changes. Go, girl. Um, how much bone broth? How often? I already answered that, Mandy. Um, four to six ounces every day, ideally, five days a week at the minimum. How do I feel? I feel freaking awesome. Um, yeah, feel good. Thank you. About oh, how do I feel about fruit? Ha ha ha. Um, fruit is is okay. Again, um, in moderation. I think low glycemic fruit. So things like berries and melons are great, and they could be pictured on this plate too. I think um, we were just really focusing on the main macros, but yes. Fruit is another good source of healthy carbohydrates as well. So I just prefer the low glycemic fruits. And you can have, uh, you know, one to two servings a day of that. Um, okay, so Bandy, I'm not going to answer that right now because it is off topic. Um, so if you want, you can just, I'll, I'll come back around. So maybe Courtney or Beth, can you just copy and paste this question um, and bring it to my attention and I'll answer it later? Uh, okay, what about a vegan diet? I do not think veganism is healthy for trying to conceive. I'm sorry. Um, I think there's a lot. I recommend a lot of veggies, veggies and fat that fall into the vegan category by all means, but I do think you need good sources of animal protein for true optimal health and fertility. Um, what would you class as one serving of vegetables? So usually it's one cup is one serving. Um, sourdough bread versus healthy gluten free bread, what's the difference? Sourdough is fermented and sprouted. And so, well, sourdough is fermented. So the fermentation process actually breaks down some of the grains. So it's a lot easier to digest. Um, there is some yeast in sourdough, but otherwise it's just fermented, um, you know, sourdough starter, from, and it's a, it ferments the grains. So it's so much easier on your body to digest. Gluten-free breads typically have lots of like the tapioca starches in there and lots of like nut flours and things like that that can be pretty inflammatory and harder to digest. So once in a while, sure, everything in moderation. Of course, I'm a moderate person and, and I recommend that. But, um, you know, we're talking about top quality, high notch foods for fertility. Okay. So amyrop.com slash cookbook is the, the pretty link that you guys can go to. Use promo code cookbook flash 0219. Get that cookbook for $7.20. This is only up for today. So if you watch this Facebook live tomorrow, guess what? Sorry, you're out of luck. Um, today, flash sale cookbook. Go and get it ASAP. Um, so excited about the cookbook. You're welcome, Karen. Yay. Okay, so let's just see Instagram. Any questions here? Um, just people cheering me on. Thank you so much. I went over the macros. If you're lacto ovo vegetarian, eat dairy and eggs. What protein can you eat? Again, then you would be eating dairy protein and you'd be eating eggs. Um, and I'd also challenge you you know, and I mean this in a very loving way to anybody who's vegetarian, vegan, and if you've been trying to conceive and it hasn't been working, that what is your resistance to changing your diet a little bit more and introducing animal protein? I, I respect the ethical reasons. I totally respect that. However, um, I've worked with so many people from, you know, ethical and religious standpoints that don't eat animal protein and they get permission from any of the, their leaders in their you know, religious sex, and uh, SCCT sex, um, to eat and consume animal protein when it's for medical reasons, which trying to conceive is considered a medical reason, you are allowed to and you should be consuming animal protein. Every single diet through the history of time, when a woman's trying to prepare for conception, she is eating some animal protein. So I strongly recommend it. And if it's for ethical reasons, then of course, you just do the grass fed, you do hormonally, um, you know, I'm sorry, humanely raised animals, and you bless them, you thank them, you feel good about it. But animal protein, I heard one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Thomas Cowan, he said once, if you're trying to create a human, you have to eat what humans are made of. And they are made of protein, fat, uh, water, 
and throw in some veggies. And so the protein though, the most complete proteins we can get are from animal proteins. If you are getting protein mainly from beans and nuts, they have to be soaked and sprouted for you to consume them and get what you need. And then if you are not eating animal protein, you must be on a really good B complex because you need more B vitamins than the average bear who does eat animal protein, okay? Um, all right, so the cookbook, uh, Okay, suspected endo, never had a BFP. So yeah, I would say, Fertility Empowerment Girl, this is your book. I would read both of them, but this is the diet and lifestyle you need to follow. This has worked incredibly well for my endometriosis clients. Like, it is the best for my endo clients. What things should be in moderation for those who have estrogen-driven issues like fibroids? Um, really, it's the same thing, though. Uh, you know, you want to eat a ton of the green vegetables, a ton of cruciferous vegetables. All of your animal protein must be grass-fed, humanely raised, antibiotic-free, because then it doesn't affect your hormones as much. Um, lots of healthy fats. You need to just watch sugar, soy, dairy, um, commercial dairy especially, uh, gluten, corn, those are the big no-nos for estrogen-driven issues, um, really any hormonal imbalances, and that you're getting enough healthy fats. You need, again, 45% of your diet needs to be coming from fats. You need a really good quality fish oil. I recommend cod liver oil, at least one teaspoon a day. So again, when you get, you know, and you've got to clean out your diet, get rid of the processed crap, get rid of the stuff cooked in the bad oils, like canola oil, soy oil, corn oil. Those are the bad oils, palm, um, not red palm oil, but regular palm oil. Those need to get out of your diet because those are causing the inflammation, which can also exacerbate the estrogen dominance, puts a load on your liver so it can't process out the excess estrogen. And things will come back in range. But what you really need if you have estrogen dominance is a ton of cooked leafy green vegetables and a ton of cooked cruciferous vegetables. You still need protein and you still need fat, but your veggies, bone broth, you just need to clean that all up. And then don't forget about the emotional inflammation too. I'm not gonna talk about that much today, but the emotional inflammation plays a huge role as well. So address that as well, okay? So let's see, any other questions? What kind of bread should you eat then besides sourdough? Um, none. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no other breads, um, in my opinion. Um, you can find a good quality, like organic, uh, you know, bread that's made ideally with um, dough that's not from the U.S. and you'd probably be okay. Or maybe some of these sprouted, like Ezekiel style breads would work as well. Is there a bone broth substitute for vegetarians? Um, there are fish broths out there. Vitalchoice.com makes a really good fish broth. Um, there are some mushroom broths. If you're interested in a good vegetarian broth recipe, check out, um, if you go to my site, amyrop.com forward slash body belief, there's a bunch of resources and on there I have some vegetarian options. So go and check that out. Again though, I'd still urge you to, um, to ask the question, why am I avoiding these animal products? Um, the cookbook is available for purchase by people anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. Um, which B might have been, would you recommend? Um, you know, I tend to go with like Methyl Guard Plus. That's one of my favorites um, by Thorne. Um, thank you for responding, Amy. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, you guys. So excited about the cookbook. Yay, Karen. Does everything have to be organic? It should be in this country, especially. So if you're in the U.S., absolutely it should be. Um, they just put a shit ton of pesticides, which mimic estrogen, which lead to estrogen dominance. All of our animal products that are not organic are fed a bunch of crap like soy and corn and grains and things that they're not supposed to be eating. And so then they're very inflamed. Then we eat them. We get their inflammation. Our essential fatty acid composition goes off. That changes the inflammation in our body, which changes our hormones, which impacts our fertility. Um, so yeah. Um, oh, B vitamin. No, sorry. I mean, do you mean B complex? I mean a B complex. Yeah. So Bethel Guard Plus is a really good B complex um, by Thorn that I like. Uh, you know, you could also get um, Thorn has a. You know, you could also just search Thorn B complex and find one. Uh, Seeking Health has a good B complex that I like. Um, 
what else? Mega Foods probably has a good one. Uh, by kosher, kosher and organic, super expensive. What can I do? I know, I know it's hard. Um, I just think you have to decide pay now or pay later. There's also, um, if you go to the Environmental Working Group website, ewg.com or ewg.org, they have their dirty dozen list. So they have a list of the 12 must buy organic foods and fruits and vegetables. So just do those. And then where they're not in the dirty dozen, don't buy them organic. And that's where you can save money. Okay. Um, thanks, honey. Uh, okay. So how does one improve egg quality and quantity? Uh, again, diet. Diet is one of the most important ways. Diet and managing your stress, managing your lifestyle. If you really want to, Gilbert, check out this book. Um, and that will help you so much uh, to understand more about egg quality, egg quantity, what you can do about it, uh, what you need to do about it. Okay, so, all right, my loves. So, your fertile plate, if I would you, I would like screenshot that thing, take that picture, put it somewhere on your fridge. Am I hitting my marks every single day? Am I getting enough fat, enough protein, enough veggies, and enough healthy carbs, okay? Um, is it okay to use organic honey or maple syrup? Um, Yes, again, in moderation, you know, I say no more than 15 grams of added sugar a day. Um, sprouted bread better than, um, than not. So yes, sprouted or fermented breads. Again, if you guys have more questions, these are where I'm going to direct you. Body belief, yes, you can get pregnant. Order these books on Amazon. If you guys have read these books and you have liked them and they have changed your life in the way that they should, if you follow them completely, please leave a review for me. Amazon. Amazon reviews help me sell more books, which helps me serve more people, which is my freaking mission in life is to help you all radically change your health. These books are not expensive. You can do it. You can buy both of them for under 40 bucks probably right now. So go do it. You deserve to feel better. You deserve to change your life. You deserve to be empowered with the knowledge that you can do this. You can optimize your health. You can improve your fertility. You can heal. You can do it all. Love you guys. I'll see you next week. Ciao for now. Bye. Instagram coming.